I've covered Azure Virtual Desktop in more than 150 videos. And between all my Microsoft customers and questions here on the Azure Academy, I've been asked just about every weird thing with AVD you can think of. So in this video, I wanted to have some fun and show you some of the strangest ways people have deployed AVD. And the craziest thing is that some of them are even better than how we've all been doing it. Now, before I show you any of the other weird deployments, we need to talk about support for AVD. So as long as you've got a supported version of Windows and a proper identity solution and a license, it'll all work. But that doesn't mean that every possible scenario is officially supported. Like this next one, which is really, really weird. And that's because it's using operating system inception. You know, that movie where you had the dream within the dream within a dream? Well, we can do that too. I've got a single VM here deployed in the cloud and that's running Hyper-V. And in there, I'm using something called nested virtualization so I can run Hyper-V inside of Hyper-V. And in there, I've got VMs joined to my AVD pool. So first off, why would you do this? Well, you may need more control and flexibility than what Azure gives you directly. This is also a great way of controlling and scaling your cost. So I'm just paying for one VM in the cloud that's got three disks on it. But inside that VM, I'm running 20 AVD hosts. Now you're gonna need a few things to make this work. First, you need an Azure VM size that supports nested virtualization, and you can find that in the VM sizing dock. Then you actually need to enable the feature. So sign into your Azure VM, install the Hyper-V role, but then build a VM, don't install an OS, don't power it on. Open PowerShell as administrator and type set dash VM processor space dash VM name, and then give it the name of the VM, space dash expose virtualization extensions with a value of true. So now you can run Hyper-V inside of Hyper-V, but nested virtualization also creates another problem. In the nested layer, technically you're no longer on the Azure network and for the traffic to route between your virtual switches, which means we need to use a network address translation. So you wanna set up your virtual switch with the command new dash VM switch Give that a name and set the switch type to be internal. Then type new dash net nat. Give it a name and pick your internal IP prefix and that'll be different than what's in Azure. You could use something like 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Next, we need to give it an IP with the command new dash net IP address. Pick the first address in the pool, set that to the IPv4 family and use the prefix of 24. And now your nested VM will need an IP address and a gateway, which you could set here or just set it from within Windows. Now, of course, you could go more fancy by setting up your own DNS server, DHCP, routing a remote access if you want to, but I think that's good enough for now. Install your operating system and then repeat those steps for each layer down you go. And after you've built your Hyper-V inception as far as you want to go, then you can set up the VMs that'll be joined to AVD, which of course will require internet access on all the required AVD URLs. Next, of course, you'll need an existing AVD host pool where you can generate a registration key and then copy that. Go to your VM, install the AVD agents and paste in the key here and then reboot. And you should see them added right into your pool and you can use them like any other AVD VM. In AVD, there are three major components to your connection. The AVD cloud service that has the gateway, connection broker, and web access roles. Then the session host virtual machines that run all of your desktops and remote apps. And then your client, which connects into the service. Now, if you're doing this in the cloud, all of your traffic flow will actually be just fine. But on-prem, then, as of this past February, Azure Stack HCI can now be used in your prod AVD environments. And it's usually installed on-prem because you can't really get to the public cloud. But I've actually built this one in Azure as a nested private cloud. And if you wanna see how to get this up and running so you can try out HCI before you buy, comment below with the word HCI box and I'll make that video for you. Once you do have it built, you'll need to add an image over here to your pool so that you can deploy AVD VMs. And you can add that from the Azure Marketplace, which means you can even use a multi-session image on-prem. Other things you'll need are a logical network so that the VMs can be built on something, along with storage paths that'll hold all of your disks. 
Then you just click deploy. Pick your subscription and resource group, your pool name and your region like always. And the region in this case is gonna hold all of the metadata, not actually where you're deploying them. Then you set your app group preference and your pool type, and then you click next. For the VMs, you add a prefix just like always, but then you select Azure Stack HCI for your VMs. You'll pick your custom location, which is where your cluster is actually located, and then you pick the image that you wanna use. Scroll down, you set the number of VMs to deploy, and notice here there are no VM sizes like they are in Azure, because this is really built on top of Hyper-V, so you've got some more flexibility. Just give it the number of CPU cores you want, and then the type and the size of your RAM. Select your logical network, and then you can even add your domain join credentials along with the local admin credentials. Select or create a new workspace and on the advanced tab, select where you want all that monitoring data to go, which could be in an HCI instance or up in the public cloud. Click next and add your tags like you should in all your builds and then create. Now, once you've built the VMs, we do have another problem we have to solve, latency. You see, now your session hosts in Azure Stack HCI are on-prem in most cases, or for me in my little private cloud, so traffic flow is not really always optimal. And with HCI, client connectivity is a little weird. See, if your clients are on-prem and they connect to AVD service in the cloud, and then they find your session hosts, which are on-prem, that means you're sending all your traffic from on-prem to the cloud back to on-prem, and we call that hairpinning and that wastes a whole lot of time and adds extra unneeded latency. So to fix this, we just need to use RDP short path for managed networks. And that'll allow your clients to send their AVD traffic directly to their session hosts on-prem. But something else that's kind of weird here is storage for your FSLogix user profiles. See, it's always a best practice to have those profiles as close to the session hosts as possible. And that gives you better performance. In HCI, the best way to do that is going to build a scale-out file server cluster on-prem that is domain joined. Then your FSLogix GPOs will point back to that local file server and everything else can be set up as always and you're good to go. Now, hairpinning your traffic isn't an issue at all in this next weird deployment and it even still uses nested virtualization. This is a host. No, not, not an AVD host or even an HCI host. This is an Azure host. And these are special VMs where you can deploy your own nested VMs inside them and just manage it from Azure. They can also help you to meet a lot of regulatory requirements where you need more isolation than in the public cloud. But first, you're gonna need a host group. This contains all your different hosts and it also sets up the zone and fault domains for the hosts. Then you build the actual hosts themselves and that starts by picking a VM family. And all of the nested VMs in it will be a part of that similar size and family. So you can't deploy a D series family with F series VMs. Then you pick your number of fault domains, which is how many racks of equipment the host will build across. And if you have the Azure hybrid benefit, you wanna add that along with your tags and then create. Now, when you look at the host, it'll give you a breakdown right here of how many VMs of whatever sizes can be deployed on this single host. And then you just go and build your VMs like you'd always would. But when you get to the advanced tab, scroll down. Here you wanna select which host group you wanna use. And you can even go back up to the top and add a custom script extension if you like, kinda like this one available on my GitHub. And that'll add your VMs to your host pools and set up FSLogix for you automatically. Then just finish your build and use them like normal AVD VMs. And a really cool thing is if you have existing VMs that are in the same family and in the same availability zone as your host, you can easily migrate them into the host. Just make sure the VM is deallocated first, then scroll down to the configuration section on the left and find the host group dropdown. Select your group and click apply at the bottom. Now, the thing that is really, really strange about this last one is why it's not a fully supported scenario. In the VM scale set blade, click create. And let's use the same sub and resource group, give it a name and pick your region. For the zone, I'll pick all three zones, but we'll come back to the zones in just a second. For the orchestration mode, we want uniform since all AVD hosts in a pool should always be completely identical. 
Then you pick your security type and we have the scaling mode. Automatic will set the scaling to look at the CPU usage, which is just a percent over time. And if it goes above a certain percent, it'll scale up. And if it drops below a certain percent, it'll scale down, which we really don't want in AVD. So I'll just set manual for now. Next, you pick your image and yes, multi-session is supported here. Add your local admin credentials. And then we want to skip over to the networking tab. Pick your network and the subnet that you want to build on and then go to the advanced tab, scroll down. And if your VM size is the same as your host group and the same zone, you can even add your scale sets to the host. And that'll give you easier management and centralize your costs. Finally, you can add your tags and create. Oh, and one of the big advantages to using scale sets is upgrading the OS image. You just go to the operating system blade. And then the first time you do this, you want to click on migrate to Azure Compute Gallery. Select your gallery, your image definition, and your image version that you want to use. And that'll upgrade all of the VMs to use that new image, as well as any VMs you build in the future. And that all sounds really cool, along with the adding and deleting VMs from your pools really easily. But I've actually got an even better way to do that. And you wouldn't even need a scale set and still get all the advantages, which you can learn about right here. And happy learning.